Sorry, but we're gonna play another song you don't know now. It's called Sister Ray by the Velvet Underground.
Indifference is not an option. Only outspoken insistence that drug use will not be tolerated. Everyone is obligated to become hysterical at the mere thought of drug use, just as office workers in 1934 were obligated to scream curses like Pavlov's frothing dogs uh, when the enemy leader appeared on screen, and they'd better scream loud and scream ugly. I remember during the Mike Bell flap, uh, eyewitness news was going around prowling the streets, you know, sticking mics in everybody's face. Well, I think that making the money they do, they should be serving as an example. Now, she gets plenty of mic time. And here's a black cat working on some underground cables, straightens up and says, I think if someone uses drugs, it's his own biz. Boy, did they get that mic out of his face. He didn't even get the word out. Uh, freedom of the press to say what they want to hear and call it the voice of the people. Urine tests. Our pioneer ancestors would piss in their graves at the thought of urine tests to decide whether a man is competent to do his job. <laughs> the measure of competence is performance. When told that General Grant had a drinking problem, Lincoln said, find out what brand of whiskey he drinks and distribute it to the other generals. <laughs> Dr. Halstead, one of the great American surgeons who introduced antiseptic procedures at a time when surgeons, far from donning rubber gloves, did not even wash their hands. And the death rate from post-operative infections ran up to 80%. Well, he was a lifelong morphine addict, but he could still hack it and hack it good. And he lost no patience because of his personal habit. In those good old days, a man's personal habits were personal and private. Now even a citizen's blood and urine are subject to arbitrary seizure and search. Why the world's greatest detective could not have survived a urine test. Which is it this time, Holmes, cocaine, or morphine? Uh, Watson asks. <clears throat> It's rather disquieting to speculate what may lurk behind this colossal red herring of the war against drugs, a war neither likely nor designed to succeed. One thing is obvious, old clean money and new dirty money are shaking hands under the table. And the old tried and failed police approach will continue and escalate. In politics, if something doesn't work, that is the best reason to go on doing it. If something looks like it might work, stay well away. A thing like that could make waves. And the boys at the top, they don't like waves. Uh, Dead Souls, this sort of a film idea loosely suggested by a sci-fi book. Dead Souls postulates that the soul is an electromagnetic field designed to occupy and activate a certain organism. While infinitely less vulnerable than the artifact it occupies, the soul can be dispersed and destroyed by a nuclear blast. This is, in fact, the ultra-secret and super-sensitive function of the atomic bomb as a soul killer to alleviate an escalating soul glut stacked up like cordwood and non-recyclable by the old hellfire expedient like fucking plastics. 
Ruins of Hiroshima on screen. Pull back to show Robert Oppenheimer and the technician at a switchboard and Robert Oppenheimer flanked by middle-aged men with a cold, dead look of heavy power. The technician twiddles his knobs. All clear. Are you sure? The instruments say so. Opie says, thank God it wasn't a dud. Oh, uh, hurry up with those printouts, Joe. Yes, sir. He looks after them sourly. Thank Joe it wasn't a dud. God doesn't know what buttons to push. However, some tough young souls, uh, horribly maimed and very disgruntled, do just survive Hiroshima and come back to endanger national security. So the scientists are put to work to devise a super soul killer. No job too dirty for a fucking scientist. They start with animals and there are some laboratory accidents. Run for your lives, gentlemen. A purple ass baboon has survived 23 skadoo with the most savage animal on earth. The incandescent baboon soul rips through a steel door like wet paper. Yeah, we had to vaporize the insulation, lost expensive equipment and personnel. Irreplaceable, some of them, real soul food chefs. You might say cordon bleu. Well, trial and error, we now have soul killers that don't quit. State of the fart. Sure, the big part. We know how it's all going to end, the first sound and the last sound. Meanwhile, all personnel on planet Earth can find two quarters, a permanent party, you might say. Convince them they got no souls. It's more humane that way. Scientists always said there's no such thing as a soul. Now they're in a position to prove it. Total death, soul death, it's what the Egyptians call the second and final death. This awesome power to destroy souls forever is now vested in far-sighted and responsible men in the State Department, the CIA, and the Pentagon. The president, 500 feet down in solid rock, appears on television and gives the American people a finger. I got mine, fuck you, every crumb for himself. Sometimes.
hate convenience. I hate anything that's open 24 hours. I don't want to have to be able to buy things all day and night long. I hate white hand pantries. I hate convenient markets and I go into that convenient markets and I see that chick behind the counter and she's dressed to kill and she's just a checkout chick. And I go there and I go underneath her legs as she is working out those objects as she's checking out those people. And I ever walk all over my bare, bare back till she makes me black and blue. And then when she's finished, I take that blonde haired chick that looks like some burnt out blonde haired fussy chick and I throw her against the slurpy machine. And then after I throw her against the slurpy machine, I make her wear a wet t-shirt that says Spud McKenzie on it. And then I make her get on all fours. And then I look down to her and I say, act like a fucking party animal now, bitch. Act like a fucking party animal now. And I look down at her and I say, why do you wear that makeup like that? Why do you wear that aerobics clothes? Why do you dress like that? Your life is boring. Your life is meaningless, sister. And she just says to me, how can I make my life more meaningful? How can I make my life more meaningful? And I say like this, baby, and I'll pick her up. I'll pick her up by uh, her ankles. Yeah, I'll pick her up by her ankles. And I'll take her head and I'll put it into that ammonia silver suds. And I'll wash the entire floor with her head. Ooh, because she's good for nothing else. Ooh, and I'm washing the entire floor with her. And I fuck her while I'm mopping that floor, baby, because I come from the city with big shoulders. And I love to do two jobs at once. Ooh, and then I just keep on mopping that floor with her, but I just drop her when I get to the dairy case, because it's those dairy cases, it's those damn goddamn dairy cases, because those dairy cases are bigger than most New York apartments, oh, and then I look and see what's inside those dairy cases, it's that culprit, it's that devil, it's the reason why my country is over with, Kennedy would never get us away with this, it's that hogging glove. It's that Frugin Lodge. It's that Ben and Jerry Garcia bullshit. 1899 and ounce ice cream crap. And I take that ice cream and I open up the lid and I piss in them, baby. Oh, I jerk off in them. I go into little kids' butts and I take out their little turds and I put it in that chocolate macadamia. $25 a pint, baby. Oh, and and then I just throw that ice cream back in there and I go and I stake out to the video rental counter, the temple of our culture. And I just wait for all of you guys coming in your Camaros, coming home from your jobs, your Cherokee cheeps. Oh, you don't care what you do, just as long as you get that 99 cents tape of Rambo, the color of money. Oh, and I just wait for you to get your tape. You're going to go home. And then you go and you buy a quart of me, baby. You go and you buy my ice cream. Yeah, I get my revenge. I get my revenge. I get my revenge. Phoenix. 
accepting with nightmares. They convinced me I was wrong. of a dead bird. It's a mistake to think you're special.
Nation.